Few more minutes, please. Okay, can we start? Are uh, the students uh, good evening, everybody? Welcome, Dr. Charles. Thanks, Jayanti, ma'am, Kanai sir, and all other senior faculty members. And for today's discussion, we have Dr. Samir Kumar from Global. Are you there, Dr. Samir? Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, and Dr. Jagdishwar from Kims. Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Okay, and Dr. Praveen from Kims. Yes, sir. I'm also here. Sir. We are all there. Okay, good. Welcome to today's clinics. That is not the slide. One second. Are you able to see the slides? Not as yet. Not as yet. No. Yeah, we can see now. Full show. Can we get us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying. Is it full screen now? Yeah, it's full screen. Yeah, you can start. Okay, Doctor Samir, you just uh, read out. You will be the first presenter. Can the ma'am please take an active role today? Actually, I am on standby mode. Okay. Because the faculty was supposed to be here to, to discuss today, had some difficulties. Okay. So, Dr. Charles, uh, Dr. Jayanti, ma'am, please take active role. I also ship in, in between. Okay. Uh, can I proceed, sir? Yeah, please. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, 54 year old mayor, Mr. S., college educated, businessman, informant is the patient and wife. They are known to have a liver disease for the past five years on irregular follow up. Now presented with pain upper abdomen for five days, fever for three days, jaundice for three days. Sir, uh, uh, further elaboration, I want to know uh, pain. How was the onset? Uh, then duration, uh, duration is five days. Uh, then how, is it progressive? Then what is the site? And uh, is there any uh, relation with uh, food intake? Is it associated with vomiting? Is there any radiation? And... Uh, and the severity also, I would like to know, sir. Okay, so just like any other case, you will take all the details of pain. You will take the details of fever. Also, of course, jaundice is only for three days, so we don't have to, we don't have much uh, uh, thing to ask for it. Okay. So uh, now, when you have, a, when a patient with the liver cirrhosis present with acute pain, what all things should go through your mind? Then only yes. you can ask an appropriate history. Yes, sir. Uh, because patient already has liver disease history, uh, pain upper abdomen, pain abdomen generally first thing that should come to mind is uh, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Then okay. apart from that, uh, patient can have uh, uh, portal vein thrombosis. Uh, so here it is written upper abdomen, but is uh, SBP associated with the upper abdominal pain? If no, sir, SBP is generally what diffuse, is the type of pain? Generally, it is diffuse abdominal pain. Oh, diffuse pain. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, then upper abdomen pain. If patient has history of alcohol intake, I would like to consider acute pancreatitis also. Okay, and, pancreatitis can occur. Agreed. Yes, sir. Uh, then if he has a gallstone disease, so acute cholecystitis. Or, okay, so uh, biliary pain or cholecystitis. Okay, agree. Pain. Yes, sir. It's in the liver. Yes, liver. Uh, patient has any liver abscess, cholangiolitic abscess uh, that has caused. Uh, so the, secondary uh, to cholangiitis, there could be cholangiitic abscess. Okay, liver abscess and pain. Anything yes, else? Sir. Then luminal related like peptical disease. No, liver. Liver not oh, over. Okay, oh, liver. Okay, sir. Uh, can uh, what are the what are the ways in which liver can produce pain? Think of think like that. Yes, sir. Due to the stretching of the glycerin capsule, that can so, be due, due so to congestion. Sudden stretch of the so increase in tension inside the liver due to stretch of the capsule and fairly rapid increase in the total volume of the liver. This can happen due to uh, due to congestion uh, that can be okay. secondary to biliary um, um, obstruction or even due to so hepatic venous obstruction of the blood, auto obstruction of the bile. Then, uh, then even if a Large uh, li liver abscess is. Uh, yes, large liver abscess or yes, diffuse yes. inflammation as in viral hepatitis. Viral hepatitis. Hepatocellular carcinoma may not produce acute pain usually, but can it produce acute pain? If there is a rupture or. Um, is it sudden... that very common rupture? No, sir, not very common. Have you seen a case of rupture of hepatocellular carcinoma? Uh, one case we have seen, sir. Present okay, that is worthy of a publication, no? <clears throat> Okay. What happens more? Uh, Suddenly the size of the cyst increases. Bleeding into the tumor. Okay, That's common for most of the tumors. No? Bleeding into the tumor. Tumor increases in size. All those things. Okay. So, and these are liver related. Then biliary, as you said, gold blood and the stones producing biliary pain. Mm -hmm. and biliary and <clears throat> cholangitis, etc. Then an alcoholic person can also can a person with alcohol use disorder can have a large MSG liver disorder, and also pancreatitis. pancreatitis. They can even have gastritis. A cirrhosis patient can also have 10 percent, 10 to 15 percent may have additional peptic ulcer disease. So all these things are there. Plus there could be totally unrelated things. Okay, so related and unrelated thing. And depending on each of these, when you take the first few words, first when you listen to the patient, the first few sentences should give you some idea as to what type of pain it is. Dr. Charles, do you want to add anything? Um, Samir, uh, when you say fever, jaundice, and uh, upper abdominal pain, yes, so what, what are the things that come to your mind? This is actually looking like a charcoal spray, um, but it is in the upper abdomen, not right hypochondrium they specified. So I would like to consider cholangitis also in this patient, apart from liver abscess. Uh, and because history of uh, liver disease is there, one remote possibility of spontaneous bacterial carcinitis also I would consider, though it is not diffuse pain. Uh, Right-sided empyema is also one possibility in which they can have right-sided pain sometimes in the right hypochondria. Um, can it be acute alcoholic hepatitis? Yes, sir. Uh, duration, though it is three days, acute alcoholic hepatitis can also have present with uh, fever, jaundice, and abdominal pain. Low-grade fever can be there. Ma'am, do you want to add anything? Fine, I think, yeah. So I think class 5, just keep on, you know, infection, inflammation, vascular, neoplastic, miscellaneous. Just keep that in, cat in that category. You will come out with some of the differences automatically. Okay. Now, now you please go through it. Uh, he was a known case of uh, cirrhosis of the liver diagnosed five years ago. Was on irregular follow-up and treatment. Recently presented to emergency with uh, upper abdominal pain for five days. Acute in onset, felt in the epigastrin, severe in type, for which he took oral painkillers initially. There is no radiation of uh, back, shoulder region, or scapular region. Pain became less with medication, but worsened after two days, which forced him to attend emergency. He developed moderate fever two days after the onset of pain. There was no chills or rigors. Fever was present throughout the day and night. He also noticed worsening of pre-existing mild illness two days after the onset of pain. No history of pruritus. He vomited a few times at the height of pain, and vomitus contained small quantity of partially digested food. No GI bleeding during the current illness. No altered sensorium on presentation to hospital. Okay. Are you happy with this history or do you want any additional things? Um, no aggravating, no relevant factors. 
Yes, sir, it is. Uh, I'm okay. It was fairly acute in onset of pain. There was no aggravating factor, and the relief was obtained by taking oral painkillers. And uh, after two days, it became again worse, and then he had to go to the hospital to take injection. So these are the aggravating and relieving factors. Okay. Apart from that, if a person has liver abscess, you know, they have a catch on the inspiration. You know, that will give you a clue. So they will they will withhold your breath. Likewise, there's an acute polycystitis. Say with Murphy sign positive. The, the, the respiration will be guarded, so you know you can almost get that information in the history that when they cough or they sneeze, it the, can be an acute pain. Okay, or rather the inspiratory catch. Okay, so Dr. Charles, would you like to? No, sir, nothing. Nothing. Okay. Past events, he developed hematemesis followed by Melina five years ago. Then he was diagnosed to have cirrhosis related to alcohol use. He had endoscopic therapy with bands for three times at intervals of few weeks. He was asked to stop alcohol, uh, which he did for the next two years. There was recidivism after two years for next six months when he developed GI bleed again. Endotherapy was repeated. For the last three years, he developed, he does not use alcohol, but reports to hospital only if there was any health problem. He had GI bleed nine months and three months ago, and he noticed pedal edema, abdominal distension after each episode of bleed. He was admitted in the hospital for about one week each. Endoscopy was done, but no banding was done. He was on medication since then. Edema subsided in two weeks time. Past illness, uh, he has diabetes for last seven years on OHA, poor control. There was no abdominal pain in the past, no history of any altered sensorium after GI bleed. No past history of any jaundice or liver disease prior to five years. Uh, family history, there is no relevant uh, history. Personal history, feels feverish. Appetite is reduced for last one week. Bubbles are constipated for last five days. Uh, history of uh, alcohol use disorder from the age of 28 years until 48 years of age. He used to take three to four units, two to three times per week. We started uh, drinking at the age of 50 years and continued for next six months. He has not taken alcohol for the last one and a half years. No smoking, no other high risk behavior. He is a middle class socioeconomic status. His diet requirement is 1600 kilocalorie, intake about 1200 kilocalorie, and uh, ECOG performance status is three. Okay, can you summarize? Uh, Do you want any further details? No, sir. So there was no associated uh, abdominal distension at any time. Uh, even abdominal after. distension. That uh, I don't think was any. Like, he didn't complain okay. of abdominal he distension. Didn't it was only pedal edema. Okay. Urine output. Urine uh, output. Urine output was normal. Oh, recently there was no change in the urine output. He has noticed actually abdominal distension when he had GA bleed nine months ago and three months ago. No. At that time, there was a pedal edema and abdominal distension, which I think disappeared uh, within one or two weeks of uh, treatment. That is what they said. At, at the moment, he has no. At the moment, he has no reduced urine output. He has no abdominal distension. Okay. So that's the history. Total history. Okay. You have to build up your uh, diagnosis on basis of entire history. Okay, sir. So this is a 50-year-old male uh, who was diagnosed to have chronic liver disease. Five years back, alcohol use disorder related uh, chronic liver disease. Uh, his index presentation was uh, upper GI bleed, following which he was abstinent for a few months. Later, he had different episodes of GI bleed, uh, uh, following which he remained abstinent till the age of 48 year old, 48 years. But now again, uh, he started taking. Summarize some. Okay, ma'am. Uh, you are summarizing. One case of alcohol use. Chronic liver disease. Disease. Was uh, had uh, recurrent episodes of uh, GI bleed in the past, associated with uh, abdominal distension and edema during the times of GI bleed, uh, which have been controlled with endoscopy and uh, endoscopy and banding. Um, he is also known case of diabetes for last seven years on OHA. Just hold on. Just finish off all the complications. Compensated. He's otherwise compensated. He's otherwise compensated. Uh, no urinary, no renal dysfunction. Finish off all the complications. No? Yes, ma'am. The recent history of fever, jaundice, and abdominal pain. Pain, yeah, that's that's basically what you want to disclose is cirrhosis, its complications. Come out with that in your summary, 
and then the bleed we have to discuss whether because uh, I, they said no binding was done, so whether that bleed was related or unrelated. That we will discuss, that will come in your summary, and with the recent history of abdominal pain, fever, and jaundice. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Charles, you would like you to take over because you are the, the liver, liver team, liver hepatologist. Yes, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Samir, uh, what would be a differential diagnosis here? You got a sonotic patient who had bleeds before, no banding, no person with fever, jaundice, and upper abdominal pain. What what would be a diagnosis that you consider? Uh, uh, still, uh, the differential I would consider is uh, um, features. Uh, there's no abdominal distinction. Uh, a liver abscess, uh, a possibility I would consider, sir. Uh, cholangiolitic abscess, if, uh, if also uh, acute cholecystitis is also a possibility I would like to consider. And, um, and the, why, why you want to consider something different from cirrhosis? Why don't you, if the patient has got cirrhosis, he had decompensation yes, before. Sir, related to cirrhosis? Now, related to cirrhosis. Now, again, decompensation is not this. Yes, so, uh, related to cirrhosis, uh, uh, patient has one, two, two, or three. Yes, sir. If related to cirrhosis, first of all, we consider is uh, uh, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Then, okay. uh, portal vein uh, thrombosis. Uh, acute portal vein thrombosis. Acute, okay. acute portal vein thrombosis. And, uh, is it common to have fever in acute portal vein thrombosis? Uh, sir, if it is uh, uh, significant portal vein thrombosis, uh, if ischemia of the bowel is there, then patient can have fever and the fever can be there. Or uh, large area of uh, necrosis developed in liver also, they can develop uh, uh, because of... Uh, the decreased blood supply, patient can, the liver uh, can go into necrosis and can develop fever. And also, uh, secondary infections can develop due to translocation, because photovin thrombosis occurs and uh, translocation of the gut bacteria occurs and patient can develop sepsis uh, in that case. And then, um, the other definitions would be? Yes, sir. Um, Yes, restarted alcohol. Would you like to consider alcoholic? Oh, alcoholic hepatitis yes, uh, also one possibility. Uh, no, alcoholic hepatitis. Uh, um, acute and chronic liver failure, I would consider because already is a chronic liver disease. Could it be a mass? Could it be a could it be a hepatocellular carcinoma? Uh, presenting with acute pain, uh, uh, the a remote possibility I would consider. There is no history of weight loss or loss of appetite. Only for you say remote possibility, no? It is a possibility. Yeah, it is a possibility, no? It is a yes, long standing history. We do not know whether it's hepatitis B, we do not know whether he's got an underlying C, we have no idea. No, we only know that he's got alcohol related liver disease. But HCC is a differential. What are the what are the what are the para, what are the manifestations of HCC in a cirrhotic liver? Uh, can they can present with uh, uh, lump abdomen, pain, right hypochondrium, uh, fee, loss of weight, loss of appetite. Number one, uh, they can present as PO. PO, yes. Ma that is number one. Number two, they can present as paraneoplastic. Paraneoplastic, like hypercalcemia, hypercalcemia, hypoglycemia. Number two. Number three, but there is liver, one minute. Cirrhotic livers can suddenly become enlarged. That's number three. So okay. when you find a cirrhotic liver and it's palpable, then you start suspecting a HCC. Number four is presenting like an acute Bacchiari syndrome, either by infiltration or by extrinsic compression. Okay? And in a patient like this, when a person has sudden onset of ascites, or a person has a sudden onset of abdominal pain, just like Dr. Barry's mentioned that, no, you can have a necrosis, you can have a bleed with it, mm. and the patient can have an acute pain, and nothing prevents him from having a hematobilia, and it can have still pharyngitis. One possibility is you have to, it's not in an acute onset like this, you do not have lots of weight and appetite. It's all mm -hmm. So, these are the manifestations of HCC in a cirrhotic liver. Okay, do you, do you think the patient has got cirrhosis of the liver? Why do you say he's got cirrhosis of the liver? Sir, ma'am, upper GI bleed is there. How do you know that? Only tells you he's got portal hypertension? And two, yes, ma'am, only portal hypertension is there. What in the history tells you that he's got cirrhosis? There's nothing. The, the transient, the transient decompensation may be just part of the ischemia, transient hypertension and partial, and then he decompensates and he decompensates again. Dr. Charles, would you agree to that? That what, what in the history will tell you that he's got cirrhotic liver? That's what I'm asking. Um, nothing, ma'am, except that uh, 
they said that the fastest way is the patient has diagnosed with cirrhosis for years back. Oh, so we only have an information that someone has told he's got cirrhosis in the liver. Otherwise, it may be hepatitis B, virus infection, and alcohol may just be a bystander and the whole thing of losing your track on the alcohol. And the patient may just be having a liver with HCC. And some of the history, you cannot say he's got cirrhosis. It's only based on the historical past. If he's been educated, yes. And do you think this is a natural history of five years? Do you think this is a natural history of cirrhotic liver? No, no. What would what be the natural history? Suppose he says, I've got five years. He's been drinking from the age of 28. Okay? No, no. And I know there's cirrhosis five years. What would be the natural history as you go along? Uh, by this time, we should have developed the uh, edema feet, so uh, abdominal distinction. So what would be the rate? Say, what what will happen at three years? What will happen at five years? Okay. Ma'am, uh, every uh, uh, patient, like, yes, ma'am, uh, ten percent patients every year. Yeah, ten. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, ten percent of every patients who are compensated will go into decompensation every year, and uh, especially if alcohol abuse is going on, the percentage will increase to almost thirty to forty percent every year. What are the other differential diagnoses you would you'd like to consider? Uh, if, if, if you think that he is not a cirrhotic or he just has a chronic hepatitis B or C. Uh, sir, not a cirrhotic, alcohol use, pain. Yes, sir, alcohol use disorder, hepatitis also is a possibility if the patient is not a cirrhotic. Then uh, hepatitis B uh, reactivation that can present with uh, history of fever, uh, jaundice also. And uh, so he's a male patient, autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, can be a remote, uh, can, be, can be also considered in this patient. And, uh, it's got fever, jaundice, and uh, upper abdominal pain. Possible uh, for Wilson's disease, and um, he's developed hemolytic anemia, and he has stories presenting this. Is it yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Uh, 54 years also, uh, greater than 40 years also, 10% of the cases can present. Oh, yes, so, and present at a later age. Yes, is it possible that it is binary coating, binary cholangiopathy, and he's got an actually an EHPDO, and now he's presented with cholangiopathy? Portal uh, cholangiopathy. All of these should come in your mind, you know, because whatever the patient has, as far as the history is concerned, there's only a transient decompensation, which is not fitting him actually with the natural history of the cholangiopathy liver, and that too consuming alcohol in this period. So always keep, you know, when, when you discuss this case, we have to discuss this case, you know, like if you say it's a chronic, it is chronic liver disease, I think that we can agree to that. And only thing is that there is chronic, but I would definitely consider there are two episodes of bleed. The whole thing is just an EHP which doesn't be very That's one possibility. Number two, I would consider it is medicine disease, chronic liver disease, hemolytic anemia, stone disease, and it's not polyntitis. And if you accept the diagnosis of cirrhosis, in that context, cirrhosis of the liver is not fitting in five years by now. We're expecting some decompensation. In reverse cirrhosis of the liver, since he has been absent for quite some time, then you consider the possibility of you can get stone disease, and you can get a liver abscess as well, and get CC, and get CC. Okay, and also keep all the differentials, you know, biliary ascariasis, all these intramural causes which can present as cholangitis. You'll be for a surprise. And you find that the biliary system is dilated and a lot of ascaris burns. Understand? Can it be hydrated? Can it be hydrated? I, I do yes, not know the case. That's why I'm just yes, discussing all the possibilities. Hydrated. So when the Pandora's box opens, nothing is left out. Can it be hydrated? Yes, ma'am. Hydrated is just a biliary structure. And how will it present with fever, chills, and rigors, and jaundice? If there's a communication with the biliary tract, the uh, patient can have colon and uh, other questions you should ask is any endoscopic intervention was has it taken place? I think that's important. Okay, you can move on. Don't don't forget the intervention. Yes. So uh, at the end of the discussion, Dr. Samir, what mm -hmm. would you like? To, where do you want to put your money on? What is the diagnosis? Is there cirrhosis? So this is a case wherein the patient says that I was 
diagnosed to have cirrhosis of liver or perhaps some disease of the liver. Okay. And until and unless you have got a record which definitely says it is cirrhosis, uh, probably this, uh, this, this is like a tip which will take you to the wrong direction. So just because you got the diagnosis of cirrhosis, uh, it, it may actually uh, uh, blunt your thinking process. Okay. Is there any way you can explain? This chap was uh, drinking uh, uh, two, three pegs, and then over a period of time, he increased. And then when he developed a problem, he stopped. And uh, uh, there was obviously nothing to suggest alcohol hepatitis. Then he stopped for about, I think, two years. And uh, during that period, the only problem was uh, uh, he had one or two episodes, I think one episode of GA bleed, which was treated by uh, some endotherapy, according to him. And then after some time, when he was all right, he again started drinking. That's the time when he develops uh, two, three episodes of bleed. And those time, the endotherapy was not done. According to him, only endoscopy was done because he is aware that some binding was done earlier. What do you think then? So whether it is unrelated to portal hypertension, like a peptic ulcer disease bleed, or related to portal hypertension, can be portal hypertension, gastropathy, or give. For Will which, that uh, produce a significant bleed to produce decompensation? What could be the cause of uh, so-called uh, ascites and he has abdominal distension and fetal edema. So how do you explain that? And he had no encephalopathy during that time. How do you explain that? Yes, sir, uh, in these abouts of GMB, a patient tends to have a transient increase in portal hypertension and they will uh, sometimes have transient appearance of abdom, uh, ascites and fetal edema also, which uh, later becomes reversible. This is especially seen in those with uh, NCPIH or extrahepatic portal hypertension. Okay, Even especially, bleeding. okay, it can develop due to the bleed itself. Or well, it can also do, develop occur due to over enthusiastic administration of crystalloids mm -hmm. also. Okay, mm -hmm. that is another another situation. Okay, in, because of the bleed, the first hospital started normally, and the second hospital continues it, and probably over 24 hours or many days it will continue. People may not notice it, and such a thing also may occur. So that can happen in non-cirrhotic portal hypertension as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the end, where do you want to put your money on? Uh, sir, so definitely diagnosis is portal hypertension. Then I would like to look at the etiology. First is uh, cirrhosis of liver, that is alcohol use disorder related, or hepatitis uh, B related, and other uh, uh, like uh, uh, Wilson's and chronic bacteria. Apart from that, portal hypertension second due to extrahepatic portal vein obstruction or uh, non-cirrhotic portal uh, hypertension. Uh, these are the these two things I will consider. And uh, the complicated now if VHP view with portal cavernal cholangiopathy. Between the two, between the two, that will be non-serotic portal fibrosis, vis-a-vis EHPVO or cirrhosis. Between the two. Um, based, on, based on the natural history, if it's more as NCPF, or CTPA score, CTPA was cirrhosis, or it will be NCPF or EHPVO. My bet will be, it will not be a symphloric cirrhosis. If it's all cirrhosis, CTPA. CTPA. Do you consider alcoholic hepatitis? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. So that was our question. Uh, another third possibility is alcohol use disorder uh, hepatitis. Okay, and but the for the last one and a half years, he is not drinking. So, what is the usual cutoff period between the last drink and the alcohol hepatitis? Sir, within the last six months, at least he should have had one drink. So, he uh, was not drinking for the last one and a half years. So, will it fit in with that diagnosis? Of course, there are situations where patient will tell lies to us. So, we have to keep your mind open. Okay, in a person with alcohol use disorder, there is always a possibility that he may be underwriting his drinking quantity as well as he may also tell that he is not drinking and may be continuing to drink. Okay, okay shall we move to physical findings? Yes, sir, uh, on general examination, his weight is 78 kilograms, BMI is 25.6, corrected BMI is uh, 23. Okay, so, uh, pulse is 102 per minute, blood pressure is 140 by 80 millimeter mercury. He is uh, febrile, uh, temperature is 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Ictrus is present, spider pneumo present over chest and back, uh, bilateral gynecomastia present, jugular venous pressure is uh, not elevated. Uh, 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 no palmar erythema, here I would also look for heptojugular research. No palmar erythema, dupetrin contracture is present, bilateral uh, pitting edema of legs, frailty test could not be performed as patient was uh, confined to bed. Yes, uh, performance status was three. On uh, system examination, abdomen inspection, abdomen moderately distended, umbilicus is central, no umbilical hernia, no dilated veins in front or back. All quadrants move equally with respiration. 
palpation liver is palpable 2 cm below the right uh, costal margin and 7 cm in the epigastrium firm irregular surface mild tenderness on deep palpation spleen is not palpable hepto jugular reflex is uh, absent a flank scar dull and shifting dullness is present auscultation no bruy or hum and cardiovascular system and respiratory system is uh, normal a cns or uh, no flapping tremors present number connection test is positive so uh, sensations normal knee jerk ankle jerks are diminished but this is probably due to alcohol uh, related uh, neuropathy or diabetic okay. this is a diabetic okay. now you tell now you tell your diagnosis uh, Sir, uh, now it is uh, now I would consider cirrhosis of uh, uh, portal hypertension. Secondly, to cirrhosis of liver, alcohol use disorder. Uh, it all it all being the etiology. Now complicated with uh, uh, fluid overload, jaundice. Fluid overload in, in the form of ascites and swelling of feet. Uh, jaundice and suspected hepatoma in this patient. Uh, uh, Hepatocellular carcinoma in this patient. So he has uh, got uh, 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 some signs of chronic liver disease. He has got evidence of fluid retention, and uh, uh, we don't have much liver; it's just palpable. That's all, and uh, deep tenderness. Okay. Samir, what what in the findings tells you he's got portal hypertension? Uh, only spider nevi is. Uh, no spider nevi. What does it indicate? Alcohol. Uh, uh, what are signs of portal hypertension you look for? So here, uh, basically, one is ascites is there that uh, suggests uh, portal hypertension. Uh, Splenomegaly, spleen is not palpable. And veins. Okay. No veins. Veins are there to be portal hypertension. Spleen is not palpable. The veins are absent. There's only minimal fluid. So what tells you that this patient actually has got uh, portal hypertension? Um, in history, only. Uh, no. But, um, Is she also be said? No, may not be. Yes. 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 Be very careful in the exam. This particular patient. Now you said he has port hypertension. Then you're taking off. It's not that. What he has is an irregular surface liver, indicating there is cirrhosis. Cirrhosis. Okay. Okay. Most of the cirrhotics will have port hypertension. We agree to that. But findings are there. Not there to say to say he's got port hypertension. Okay. So Charles, you can just take over. um uh, samir uh, after examination what would be your differentials here yeah? uh, sir uh, the cirrhosis of liver then uh, secondary to alcohol use disorder uh, the now that is decompensated in the form of uh, fluid overload ascites and edema along with uh, gi bleed in the past jaundice was also now uh, liver differential enlargement uh, is there more in the epigastrium so Uh, hepatocellular carcinoma also a possibility I would consider. Then uh, another possibility is alcohol use disorder related uh, uh, hepatitis, in which also uh, patient can have transient portal hypertension leading to ascites, edema, and also palpable liver. Then, then uh, uh, so you got a cirrhotic who is decompensated with uh, ascites, jaundice. And recent onset fever. So, what would be a one, two, three, four differentials? Um, now, uh, now complicated. Probably with spontaneous uh, bacterial peritonitis. Sir. One could be spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. What are the points against SBP here? The uh, fever against SBP. Uh, the pain is not diffuse. Pain, pain is not characteristic. You are not finding any diffuse tenderness or. Not diffuse. Yeah, abdomen. Okay. And uh, but ten to twenty percent of patients with SVP also can be uh, like vague pain and uh, sometimes just something. Yeah, like still it could be SVP one. Then second okay. diagnosis. The portal vein thrombosis also I would consider in this patient uh, because there is sudden worsening of uh, jaundice and ascites. Then. Uh, oh, how often you get uh, acute onset of that that severe pain requiring injections in portal vein thrombosis? No, sir. In Actually, abdominal pain uh, is not a dominant picture, though it can occur. But the mesenteric vein thrombosis is one. When portal vein thrombosis extends to mesenteric vein, then you can have pain because of the mesenteric ischemia. But pure portal vein thrombosis may not have that significant pain. 
Okay, portal vein thrombosis may present with the exacerbation of ascites or a new onset of ascites. Mesenteric vein thrombosis can present with the severe abdominal pain, ascites. One of the picture will be SB, it may not be SPP, but peritonitis due to ischemia. And they may even present with the diarrhea also. Okay, these things can be there in addition. Okay, so severe pain in a pure portal vein thrombosis will be difficult to explain. You're coming from HDR being absent? Um, yeah, two, uh, two possibilities. One is that patient is uh, developing uh, sensorial uh, obstruction or cirrhotic cardiomyopathy. What is cardiomyopathy? Come on. Renault, can you get an absent HDR? Uh, when there is uh, fluid, uh, 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 either uh, the outer tract is obstructed. No? Yeah, outer track. Can you get an alcohol-related liver disease? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, because uh, there is central venonitis. So central, that is a... Central highline sclerosis will present just like venoclosal disease, sinusoid obstruction syndrome. That can explain everything now. You've got a liver, you've got an ascites, you've got a tender, it's maybe an acute onset, maybe it's got a prothrombotic stage, it's got hepatic pain, outer track obstruction. Because HDR is absent. Yes, ma'am, liver is powerful tender muscle. Mm. Okay. One of the causes of acute pain, NPK always tells, oh, it's acute yes, pain. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Shall we proceed? Shortlisting, what's the diagnosis? Ma'am, uh, cirrhosis of liver, uh, uh, secondary to alcohol use disorder, that is now either complicated by a decomposition in the form of ascites, jaundice, uh, ascites, probably spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, uh, also the consideration of uh, uh, butt carry syndrome and uh, or uh, sinusoidal obstruction syndrome. Be, be very careful when you're using these terms, you're using all these terms interchangeably. Have a very okay. clear concept what is venal occlusion, what is sinusoidal obstruction, what is outer tract obstruction. Have a very clear concept. They're all not synonymous. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, so when uh, when this was, uh, case was uh, written by the SR and shown to me, uh, and subsequently did not fit with uh, the clinical diagnosis, I went and crossed a hepatojugular reflux. It was actually normally seen. The resident did not know how to do it properly. So please, will you please tell it, tell us how do you do hepatojugular reflux? Uh, sir, we have to give uh, uh, pressure with the palm over the right hypochondrium for uh, uh, 15 to 20 seconds and see if Hold there is on. elevation. Is it, so much, is it so much that you keep it in the uh, right hypochondrium? Uh, no, sir. It is otherwise known as? Abdom 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 so it can Abdom be kept Abdom in the epigastrium as well, no? Yes, sir. Okay, how long you keep it? So 15 to 20 seconds. Uh... So I knew that this is uh, uh, positive, but it was written like this by the resident. So sometimes uh, there will be a disparity between what is shown by the, uh, what is told by the uh, candidates for examination and what is seen by the examiner. And in such situation, you will be asked to go and examine. Sometimes they will ask you to demonstrate also. So you must be very, uh, very, very clear in your mind as to how you do it. There should not be any doubt. So this patient actually did not have a uh, negative particular reflex on a subsequent evaluation. Okay. okay. So... How will you now evaluate? Uh, sir, first the baseline investigation of uh, complete uh, blood count uh, with the liver biochemical test, uh, prothrombin time and the INR ratio. And uh, uh, Bhati, he'll fall. That whole thing will fall down. No? It can't bear so much weight. Uh, and, uh, in the third ram, huh? Battery which is in the mm -hmm. Samir, I have inadvertently muted you. So, please unmute. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, okay. complete blood, uh, blood count with uh, uh, PTI and liver biochemical test, a renal function test. And uh, uh, the fever is there, so a blood culture uh, and aseptic fluid tapping with, uh, with uh, sending it for. Can you report in the exam when you answer such a question? Please just keep it. It's not. You just don't miss it out. You can say, I'll, I'll do a complete hemogram to look for a bicycle oh. smear or a low platelet count. Let me help you with my diagnosis. I'll ask okay. for a peripheral smear, which will tell me whether the patient has got macrocytic or microcytic anemia. 
I look into being. This is please speak in that manner in exam. Okay. Don't just okay. say even when we ask you for the list, please tell why you're asking for the list. Then they will tell you the results. Then they will follow the results. Don't just okay. say I take blood culture. You just tell. I'll take all precautions to do a proper blood culture. We'll be a bedside culture at two different sites and we'll take the sample at the bedside. All this you must tell. Speak in that manner. If it's going to be a live session and not the virtual, all these things will be taken uh, into account when you're presenting. Okay. Uh, in complete blood count, I'll see hemoglobin, then MCV, whether it is macrocytic or macrocytic anemia. Along with the total count, eleven point four. There's a WBC. Total count is uh, elevated, ma'am. Forty down to fifty. Seventy-seven thousand. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Platelet count is reduced. CSR is fifty-six. CRP is twenty-one. Creatinine mm -hmm. is uh, one point eight. Blood urine nitrogen is eighty-seven. Comment, 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 comment on the blood sugar. Uh, ma'am, ma uh, blood sugar is elevated. He's already a diabetic, uh, so he's, he's very poorly controlled. And uh, the creatinine is also elevated. I would like to know the baseline. Even though uh, baseline is not available, this is definitely acute kidney injury. Uh, B1 is also elevated. So uh, possibility here is a pre-renal like here. Then in liver biochemical test, total bilirubin is uh, 14.1. I was expecting uh, conjugated uh, bilirubin and total bil direct bilirubin is 7.1. So almost greater than 50 percent. ASTLT uh, in the range of uh, 121. By 142, but I want, expected the AST to be higher than ALT. Uh, here it is uh, reverse uh, in the range of hepatocellular jaundice. Alkaline phosphatase is also mildly elevated, 231. I would also look for albumin, which is 2.9, and globin is 3.3.6. Uh, so there is age reversal, uh, which I was expecting this patient for cirrhosis. MLI is uh, 186 and lipase is 241, which are both are elevated. Yeah. Elevated, yes. Uh, elevated and uh, INR is uh, 2.1, uh, so it is also elevated. Uh, sodium 132, potassium 4.9. So he is having coagulopathy, uh, leukocytosis with acute kidney injury and uh, conjugate hyperbilirubinemia, uh, which is both hepatocellular and uh, uh, obstructive in uh, nature. So I mean, from this, uh, from this picture, what all you think he has got? He has got, I think, abnormality in every sentence. Okay, so tell us what it is. Uh, sir, uh, so this uh, duration of symptoms are uh, occurring less than four weeks, and he has got uh, INR more than one point five, bilirubin is greater than five. So this is like an acute uh, chronic liver failure syndrome. Uh, also, acute what? Uh, acute. Make it very clear. What? Acute what was it? Uh, sir, acute and chronic liver failure. You think it is ACLF? Yes, sir. Uh, as okay. Well, sir. Does he satisfy any of the characteristic of ALF? ALF would be a failure. Uh, because already he is having a history of compensated cirrhosis in the past. Okay, so uh, there is a history of uh, uh, cirrhosis in the past. Probably ask for the patient story. Sure. Okay. And also encephalopathy. Though his uh, NCT is positive. Yes. Uh, okay. What SRT level of encephalopathy you require in ACLF? Is it a minimal hepatic encephalopathy compared uh, to NCT? No, sir. Overt is generally uh, there. We are. Uh, well, patient does not have overt encephalopathy, no. Yes, sir. Okay, so. So that is against ALF again. Encephalopathy is not there, and SRT is generally will not be in ALF, though it can be present in subacute hepatic failure. So that is again supportive of ACLF. Uh, Samir, you. Samir, what is the definition of ACLF? Uh, sir, as per Epsilon criteria, increase in uh, bilirubin uh, greater than five, along with INR greater than one point five or less than forty percent prothrombin activity, uh, complicated within four weeks by SRTs and or hepatic encephalopathy, that is associated with high twenty-eight day mortality. Sir, uh, with this ESL, uh, there is organ failure involvement. In ESL, uh, here this patient is having bilirubin greater than twelve, fourteen. Uh, so one organ is there, and creatinine is one point eight. Uh, it is uh, it has to be two, but INR is greater than two, sir. So two organ failures are there here also. So that will also qualify as per ESL, ESL, ACL. And you you made the comment of acute kidney injury. What made you say it's acute kidney injury? You don't have a previous creatinine level, uh, sir. If uh, he's a diabetic, long-standing diabetic. Yes, sir. Long-standing diabetic, he can under have under have underlying diabetic nephropathy and chronic kidney injury. I would ask if any basal creatinine is available within last three months. If one week, uh, within last week, one week will be better. And what's the uh, definition of acute kidney injury? 
sir uh, acute kidney injury uh, kidney go definition is uh, increasing greater than 0.3 mg per deciliter over the baseline or oh, 50% increase over seven, over seven days or uh, you know output less than 0.6 we don't, they don't have a baseline here so they, when you make when you say okay baseline is not there um, is it an acute liver injury acute liver injury as per men so uh, as it is uh, generally Oh, but when do you say acute liver injury? If there is a jaundice and uh, uh, coagulopathy, not ALI versus ALF. What's the difference between ALI and ALF? Encephalopathy will be component of acute liver failure, no? So an acute liver injury, you have an INR prolongation. If any yes, sir. If it sets in, then it becomes an ALF. Yeah. Samir, would you consider acute liver failure here? Uh, no, sir. No. Acute. Uh, no. Why? This is a feature of chronic liver disease. Um, it's got gynecomastia patient, it's got spider navy patient. Yes, it's got features of chronic liver disease. So, you know, it's except three cases, three cases of chronic liver disease. Yes, what are the indicators, conditions that you can have uh, when you diagnose ALF? Like, patient is a chronic D player. Yes, but here. But yeah. And Wilson's. So, these things, even if there's something chronic liver disease, that's when this acute decomposition you can consider as ALF. Otherwise, you didn't consider acute liver failure here because this has got evidence of chronic liver disease. Okay. I think that point by Dr. Charles is very important. That question is often asked. When when you can have when can you have a deviation of an ACLF definition? One is, if, even though they have an underlying liver disease for acute but chiari, as well as for Wilson's disease, you still call it as an ALF. And I think in some of the books, they also mentioned alcoholic hepatitis. You know, even if we okay. have an alcohol-associated hepatitis, when it presents as an acute severe alcoholic hepatitis, even though they have an underlying liver disease, they still call it as three situations where Acharya and others have mentioned these three conditions, where even though there's an underlying liver disease, it's still called as a acute liver failure. And they present like an ALF. Okay, any other investigations you want? Uh, Ma'am, acetic fluid, uh, I would also say blood culture, uh, paid blood culture and uh, acetic fluid analysis, along with that ultrasound abdomen and then upper gene endoscopy. Uh, Doppler. Always awesome. Yes, upper gene endoscopy, Doppler. Yes. Uh, ultrasound abdomen, liver, both lobes, nodular, coarsely, coarse diffusely, no focal uh, lesions, minimal central IHBRD noted in both lobes, CHD is 9 millimeter, CBD is 10 millimeter, no definite stone is seen in CBD, pancreatic duct is normal. Gallbladder is mildly distended, wall thickened, multiple stones seen. Pancreas, head is mildly bulky, body normal, tail not visualized. Moderate SIT is clean, moderate enlargement. So he is having an underlying uh, Boston disease as well, for which he has developed uh, uh, acute cholangitis. And probably after he is secondary to acute cholangitis. His pancreas, head, uh, sir, Doppler. Uh, uh, so, Samit, just interpret the results. Yes, sir. And uh, there is gallbladder, uh, gallbladder wall is mildly distended also, and wall thickened. Uh, and also shows cirrhosis liver. Yes, sir. Cirrhosis. Okay. Cirrhosis and there's a spot line hypertension. Yes, sir. It's got a splenomegaly. It's got ascites. And you're seeing multiple goldstones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so, he's having chronic liver disease. Uh, uh, with ascites and also Gallstone disease causing uh, IHBRD with cholecystitis as well. And uh, head day of pancreas, sir, uh, CBD and uh, CHD are uh, uh, dilated. Probably uh, it is at the distal like CBD. Sir, his age is five. His age is fifty years, so around six mm, uh, six to seven mm. I would expect for this question. Mm is dilated because it's no? Post, it is not a post polycystic. Well, not poly, yes, not poly post polycystic. Maybe it is one centimeter almost. Do you think it's a polycystic cyst? Polycystic cyst is a possible thing. No? Just because I'm asking, don't say that. Yes. Um, but even that, uh, this age and uh, it can be a possible. The fusiform dilatation is still called one centimeter, it's quite a large one. No? And yes. they've not picked up the stone. The possibility is it could still be a stone impacted that way. Distal CBD. Uh, CBD. Because amylase was transiently elevated, like this was also 746, I think. Yes, no? ma'am. 246. 
probably he is also having uh, alcoholic uh, pancreatitis which is in the form of chronic pancreatitis, uh, pancreatitis though no calcifications or pd dilatation is there so uh, this Samir, is like, of... we want to look for a sec second cause for a pancreatitis uh, sir um... you, you are saying that he has got goldstone disease you are saying goldocolithiasis then why you want to bring in alcoholic pancreatitis then? yes sir goldstone pancreatitis only first possibility that should be the first possibility yes What else you want now? Next. Uh, here, uh, Doppler also, uh, uh, like this, you know, the portal vein diameter flow and the uh, splenic vein uh, uh, diameter flow. What else? And hepatic veins also, uh, whether, whether they are patent or not. Listing, just keep listing, they will show you results. Yes, ma'am. Um, next investigation, upper J endoscopy, uh, SRT fluid tapping, and also upper J endoscopy. And viral markers. Viral markers. Viral markers. Uh, I think acetyl fluid uh, is done. Uh, I think acetyl fluid uh, showed evidence of uh, uh, SPP also. Because mm -hmm. also. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, so blood culture is showing the uh, uh, Klebsiella species. This is probably secondary to acute cholangitis. And here, I think the gallstone disease is the precipitating uh, factor for ACLF. Antibiotics is on meropenem, INR is uh, 2.1, injection vitamin FFP given, INR improved to 1.8. Creatinine version from 1.5 to 1.8 over two days, uh, two days. B1 increased to 86. He was started on IV almond and terlipresin was also given. He was well hydrated and on Thursday, creatinine dropped to 1.5. Decided to do ERCP. So because of acid colon, this was the MRCP. This was the MRCP. Okay. Dilated CBD and CSD, stone in lower end of CBD measuring 6 mm. Mild dilatation of central IHBR. GB showed multiple stones. MRI showed the uh, bulky head region of pancreas. No mass and pancreatic ductus normal. Samir, if we go back to the ultrasound from there, if we can pick it, what are the invest for the investigation you need from there? Uh, sir, actually, the, this patient is an acute cholangitis and digital CBT is obscure. Uh, so we can do an upper endoscopy followed by US at the same setting and see if there is a digital CBT stone. So we can go ahead with once the patient is stable. We can go ahead with an ERCP procedure as well, or uh, uh, MRCP also we can do, sir. And uh, no, what is the problem with MRCP here? Uh, SITS is there, so fluid is a little bit. Uh, you may not that okay, and uh, he's got a creatinine of one point five, one point eight. Yes, sir. So uh, CCP C C yeah. abdomen is not be possible. Yes, sir. So and uh, digital vision yeah, better we can be visualized. Uh, sir. If you have a possible, if you have US with you, then that would be the first investigation. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, then, uh, uh, so blood culture already we have uh, got uh, Klebsiella. So as for that, uh, sensitivity if you are available, we can uh, continue. Uh, um, then other. Uh, so how will you manage this patient now? He's got gall stones. He's got CBD stone. Yes, ma'am. Uh, first. Blood culture positive, so just list the management one, two, three, four. What would you write and how would you manage this? Treatment? Okay, just uh, go through this uh, side wings, puppy showed pus pouring from the ambula, fingrotomy done, housing control of the, of course, uh, uh, saturation was unstable, only a pigtail was uh, introduced, and then um, pus culture, which was subsequently shown E. coli. I think it was uh, sensitive to uh, mm -hmm. iron antibiotics only. Okay, sir. Okay, what you will do? Uh, sir, uh, first stabilize the patient, starting on antibiotics and uh, motor is uh, uh, hemodynamic. Then apart from uh, uh, antibiotic, will also give albumin, albumin for this patient because it has both anti-inflammatory uh, activity also. Uh, and uh, he has got an AKI. So for AKI, albumin, uh, if this is, 
AKI stage one is then albumin alone. If it is more than that, I'm be I will start early pressin as well. This patient early pressin albumin both were given, and uh, if patient is uh, not at all stable, then as per the uh, token guideline, we have to do an urgent ERCP and uh, at least do stenting if not, uh, if not stone extraction. Uh, so this patient was stable after uh, antibiotic use, uh, creatinine, and other parameters uh, like bilirubin show a little bit improvement. We can take him for an uh, Uh, elective endoscopy within the same admission, uh, elective ERCP in the same admission. Uh, but uh, one thing, uh, blood culture being clepsiella uh, means that patient has uh, uh, severe sepsis, so ERCP has to be done at an early stage, which has been done. And uh, uh, for acute kidney injury, uh, on monitoring we have seen that is. Initially, creatinine had improved to 1.5 following uh, fluid restriction, but here uh, it is again worsening. So, uh, tolipresin was being given. Uh, I would like to increase the dose of tolipresin first and monitor the urine output, and also do a blood gas analysis to see if there is any metabolic acidosis. If there is any worsening of acidosis or patient is oligoric or anuric uh, and still creatinine is increasing, then a renal replacement therapy would be needed in this patient. And uh, Apart from that, uh, supportive uh, uh, management in the form of nutrition and. Uh, do the gallbladder stone. Yes, ma'am. Gallbladder. We manage the gallstone disease. Gallstone disease at present only stenting can be done uh, because it is a high risk candidate for any surgery or intervention at present. Manage the gallstone. Will you do anything in the future? Future, so once he is stable, a patient uh, definitely has to undergo a surgery, uh, both the stone extraction as well as uh, colostectomy. What for me. Is to me? Yes. Yes, sir. The patient has got ACL, right? No, sir. ACL at present. Uh, Colostectomy now is not. Uh, not now. The patient has got ACL, right? Uh, sir, because of uh, uh, the uh, prostatic factories, uh, colon, uh, colon, uh, disease. Uh, okay. He's got acute and chronic liver disease, secondary to uh, gallstone disease. Gallstone disease. Colon. Yes, sir. Biliary pancreatitis, SBP, he has got hepatitis in a syndrome, and sepsis in the form with pepsil and E. coli in the blood. Yes, sir. Okay. So now after you manage, how will you reassess him? Uh, sir, uh, once this uh, fever counts have settled down, his uh, creatinine is uh, if, if it is improved, his bilirubin has come down, and his acidosis also has reduced. So the Then again, I would like to assess the patient. Uh, what his status is? Generally, uh, this patient who are acute on chronic liver failure will have a progressive disease in future, and even in later term, if we want to plan a colostectomy, will be a high risk. He will be a high risk case. So I would stratify him whether it's CTP A, CTP B, or CTP C after recovery of this. Mostly, he will be in CTP C. So conservative management uh, with periodic exchange of uh, stents will be an option for this patient. If a liver transplant is planned, then with that we can. Why, why, why if? Why do you say if? Uh, sir, if uh, alcohol, uh, his his uh, liver transplant will be an option. Yes. When when you consider alcohol, or is it actually when you consider liver transplant? Suppose uh, he recovers and his merit is below fifteen. He is child A or early B. That situations yeah. you might do a call call stepping in. Yes, sir. Otherwise, you have to consider the transplant here. There's no if or but there. So. And in these oh. patients, always plan for a partial cholecystectomy. Never, never touch the gallbladder in its bed, you know, because they're all be tethered to the liver. So what we ask is that just a partial cholecystectomy, and so that this stone just drop off, so it doesn't have a second. Cheating problem, stone problem. If at all he recovers completely, okay, Charles, you can just highlight why liver transplant. I didn't follow that. No, my patient has got a ACL of 50 50 year old with ACL of male score more than 15. So uh, these are patients who are candidates for a liver transplant. You the patients with high male high CTP child BC, uh, they are not candidates for a lap calling because of the risk of the anesthesia. 
you know, the chances of this patient recovering completely with the stone uh, problem settling down, the sepsis settling down, and he comes back to CTPA, even then? Yes, yeah, that's what. If the male score is less than 15, yeah, yes, uh, lab, lab and follow. If male score is more than 15, then uh, it, it would be a transplant. And this patient is the ACLF. How do you grade this ACLF, Samir? Sir, uh, uh, for arch score, lactate is only, but for CLFC, uh, uh, Asian WBC. Uh, How many organ failures are there? Just count the number of organ failures. Uh, sir, coagulopathy, uh, at jaundice, AKA. Sir, uh, three is coming. Encephalopathy. Three, dead three, easel. Easel three. Okay. So, yes, but at least three three organ failure. So usually, we will uh, maybe we will support so we don't know about the oxygen status. Oxygen status. The situation is coming out to early B, early A, uh, to child A or early B. It less like it can, it can occur, but then still, you will have to start counseling them for a transplant. Mm -hmm. Let me have a few questions for you. What yes. are the problem reasons for? for the other so, right? Uh, what are the probable uh, reasons for worsening after ESCP? Sir, uh, all endoscopic procedures for uh, uh, high risk for cirrhotic uh, patients. Uh, all endoscopic uh, procedures like upper endoscopy? Sir, even in uh, not a diagnostic, sir, in a banding, you have to give antibiotics. Uh, interventional uh, therapeutic endoscopy procedures are uh, uh, destructive for developing sepsis. In, uh, therapeutic procedures are prolonged ones. There is usually some cutting and uh, tissue tissue abrasion involved, and most probably you will be using some sedative or anesthetic agents as well. So, yes, and this is a patient already having problem with infection and other things. So, uh, the, 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 the sum total of all those things will may affect effect. It is just like a, a surgery, you know. Yes. Though even though you are not doing a pakka surgery, it is a uh, it is something short of that. But still, yes. uh, the risks are all fairly same, no. Yes, sir. Okay. General drug of the So you, that ECLF, we have already agreed that there is ACLF and yes. uh, precipitating also, I think we mentioned. Do you think there is a difference between APASL and ESL criteria for ACLF? Yes, sir. Uh, difference is there, sir. APASL uh, criteria mainly they focus on. But he's just move on. That those okay. Typical, okay. typical theory questions and all the answers. Okay. So please read up this bacterial infection and cirrhosis and anencephalopathy. Okay. Uh, the second one is AGA clinical practice update on surgical risk assessment and perioperative management and cirrhosis. You have got uh, some uh, uh, Mayo Mayo scoring system which is online available. This is a Mayo scoring which will tell you the risk 7 days, 30 days, 90 days, 1 year, 5 years like that. Okay. So a preoperative assessment has to be done. A postoperative assessment, perioperative and postoperative thing. So, uh, a person with cirrhosis undergoing a procedure like surgery, you have to be extremely careful. You have to assess him preoperatively, perioperatively, postoperatively, and uh, it should be a multidisciplinary team to look after. Because uh, otherwise, uh, you may lose the patient. And uh, if uh, liver transplantation is not thought of, probably cholecystostomy may be done rather than cholecystectomy, which, which uh, cholecystostomy will be easier and uh, lesser risk compared to cholecystectomy. So thank you, Dr. Samir. And then uh, I invite uh, Dr. Jagdishwar from Kims for the next case. Um, please read about cirrhosis associated immune dysfunction also, CAID. There's something coming up called CAID. Please okay. read about it. Okay. What was it, Dr. Charles? Cirrhosis associated? Immune dysfunction. According to uh, Easel Cliff, immune dysfunction is the cause for infection. That is also considered as an organ failure. Jagdish, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Okay, please start. Uh, 56-year-old male, uh, studied up to 10th standard, former by uh, occupation, informant patient and his wife, history reliable. His announced case of alcohol use associated with uh, liver disease and treatment from uh, various hospitals uh, for the last four years. Uh, present problem, he presented with abdominal distension uh, for the last one year. Worsen since uh, last one month. Fetal edema for the same duration. Worsen since one month. Uh, there is a history of uh, decreased urine output uh, since two weeks. Exceptional breathlessness and uh, fatigue since uh, two weeks. Mild diffuse pain in the abdomen since one week. Sir. 
So, how, what do you think? This is a history. Sir, it's a uh, case of uh, alcoholic uh, liver uh, disease associated with the progressive abdominal distension since one year, and it's worsened since uh, one month. And associated with uh, history of decreased urine output since what two weeks. The doctor just highlight all the complications. Don't repeat the history. Tell us all the issues. What are the issues? What are the various problems the patient is having? If I having a uh, uh, SITs, ma'am, and one uh, decreased urine output, so uh, probably some uh, hepatorenal syndrome also will be complicated. Associated with uh, mild disease abdominal pain, so HBP also will be possible. And uh, there is a exertional breathlessness and fatigue, ma'am. So I, I want to rule out: is there any uh, hepatic hydrothorax or uh, other associated uh, pulmonary complications with the cirrhosis, like hepatopulmonary syndrome or uh, uh, photopulmonary hypertension, ma'am? Okay, proceed. And then uh, he was diagnosed to have alcohol-associated liver disease when he developed jaundice five years ago. He had fever for one week, abdominal distension, fetal edema at that time. Um, there was no GI bleed or altered sensory then. He was uh, admitted and treated for one month and he improved. He resumed alcohol use after two years and was not willing for any treatment or direction therapy. He had some issues with family members regarding his uh, property, which uh, made him resume alcohol use. He used to drink three to five units, uh, three to four times uh, weekly. Two years ago, he sustained multiple body injuries during an accident while riding a, a bike. According to him, he was not under the influence of alcohol at the time. Had multiple wounds which required suturing, no fractures, no transfusions. However, he had withdrawal symptoms while in hospital. And had to be treated under psychiatry department since last two years. He is not in the habit of using alcohol. He noticed his pedal edema and abdominal distension one year ago, and he was on treatment with a diuretic since then. Furosemide and phenylalanine. He was not advised salt restriction, but was not compliant. He was advised actually. That's the typo. Hmm. He was admitted six months ago due to worsening of abdominal distension and three liters of fluid was removed from the abdomen by tapping. Since then, he had two more admissions for tapping as it is. History of uh, removal of no larger history, quantity no of fluid. Hmm. No hmm. history of removal of larger quantity of fluid or uh, all mean incident. Now, for the last one month, abdominal distension has uh, worsened along with uh, worsening of pedal edema and diminished fluid output for the last two weeks. He has been taking medicine regularly. There is no history of NSAIDs or any use of uh, complementary or alternative medication. Now, for the last two weeks, he has exceptional breathlessness, fatigue, and early satiety, and mild dull aching pain in the abdomen for the last one week. No fever or chills. For last one week, he has pain mild of left leg at rest, mild increase in movement. There is a gain of 6 kg weight over the last two months. So, uh, there is no history of GI bleed or altered sensorium, past illness, no other significant illness, family history, nothing significant, personal history, appetite reduced, sleep disturbed at night, um, bowels occasionally constipated, bladder habits normal, alcohol use from the age of 30 years, initially once a week, uh, then increased to 3 units, um, 2 to 3 per uh, week, over a year, increased to 3 to 4 units, stopped 5 years ago and resumed 1 year later, now stop completely since last, since last year. No smoking or uh, substance use. Calorie intake requirement in is 1800 kilocalorie. Intake is 900 kilocalorie now. Mixed diet. Uh, ECOG performance status uh, 3. Okay. You summarize. So uh, this is a 56 year old male presented with uh, history of uh, alcoholic uh, alcohol use disorder. Uh, probably uh, uh, cirrhosis of liver uh, followed by uh, abstinence, developed abdominal distension and fetal edema from since last year. It's a recurrent uh, abdominal distension. Um, since last one month, abdominal distension is progressive uh, associated with decreased urine output. And there is a history of uh, pain in the abdomen. And there is no evidence of any history of uh, upper GI bleeding. There is no history of uh, hepatic encephalopathy. And uh, there is no... Uh, uh, there is history of repeated paracentesis. Uh, yes, ma'am. History of uh, repeated paracentesis. And uh, the, uh, he, he was on uh, diuretics, but uh, not on uh, sodium restricted diet. 
um, he, he was not compliant on uh, diet restriction. Okay, so what is it? So my uh, differential, di uh, my diagnosis will be uh, cirrhosis of liver with uh, uh, secondary to alcohol uh, uh, is, uh, disorder, um, uh, portal hypertension with uh, 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 refractory ascites, sir. Associated with uh, complicated refractory ascites, complications by heptorenal syndrome or uh, SBP. Okay. What are the complications he's had? What are the complications, number one? Uh, number one is hepatorenal syndrome, ma'am. Uh, number two will be SBP, ma'am. Any other? Uh, ma'am, I, I want to rule out other uh, complications like hepatic hydrotherapy also because he has ex exertion dyspnea and uh, uh, fatigue or bilateral floral effusion because, uh, 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 because of uh, grass ascites, ma'am. Any other? So, what are the other, other things you consider when somebody has got ascites which is difficult to manage? Sorry, sir. Yes, ascites which has become in, sort of intractable, no, or rather refractory. So, what are they? What are the other causes other than a natural deterioration of the liver function in a cirrhosis and then development of perhaps renal dysfunction? Can you can you think of any other cause? Sir, uh, one will be the uh, renal dysfunction only, sir. Renal. And any infection, secondary to infections like SBP. SBP, okay. SBP may be a reason for a, a reason worsening, but and uh, and any uh, new hepatocellular carcinoma. Okay, hepatocellular yeah, carcinoma with then. Uh, what other complications can occur in HCC? Hepatocellular carcinoma leads to portal vein thrombosis, acute portal okay. vein portal vein thrombosis, tumor. Okay. They can have even hepatic vein thrombosis also, no? Yes, sir. Hmm. Is, sir why did you say refractory ascites? Uh, sir, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, uh, patient had uh, refractory ascites. He is not, uh, uh, not completely to the refractory ascites. I can call it as a recurrent ascites for him, sir. More than refractory ascites. Because he was not given a sufficient dose of diuretic not given a sodium restricted diet and uh, uh, dose of uh, diuretics also not a uh, maximum dose. So uh, mostly recurrent ascites then uh, refractory ascites. And only say probable because we, we don't have the dose of diuretics. We don't know. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. On examination, patient is uh, moderately built, uh, weight 68 kgs, BMI 24.2, uh, pulse rate 92, uh, 92 beats per minute, BP 140 by 86, alert, poor muscle mass of upper limbs and thighs, uh, frailty test not done, extras present, spider navy on chest, uh, bilateral gynecomast has seen, no flapping tremor, bilateral fitting pedal edema, more on uh, left side, tenderness on uh, cough muscle of left and warm, more warm, um, Common sign negative. Oral cavity, poor oral hygiene, multiple characteristics, abdomen markedly distended, umbilical centered, averted, umbilical hernia skin, size 5 cm with uh, thinned out skin, no dilated veins, palpation fluid still present, liver and spleen not palpable, separate jugular reflex absent, drop space dull, no brute or hum, hernial arthritis and external gentility are normal, parietal uh, examination not done. Respiratory system, no features of floral effusion, TVS normal, CNS, no overt or occult uh, minimal hepatic encephalopathy. So, what is it after physical examination? After physical examination, I want to uh, look for complete hemogram, sir. Look for uh, any uh, thrombocytopenia, uh, anemia, sir, to rule uh, any, of, uh, upper, uh, any uh, chance of upper GI bleeding and uh, portal hypertension gastropathy. I want to see the liver function test. I'll uh, look for the AG reversal, um, any uh, history of uh, jaundice or, uh, and uh, ASTLT levels. Um, uh, then I'll look for serum creatinine and blood urea nitrogen, sir, and uh, PTINR, uh, uh, serum creatinine, sodium potassium, and urine, uh, urine spot sodium for uh, 24 hours and urine. Uh, uh, 
and asset next one is the aesthetic fluid analysis sir aesthetic fluid analysis i look for uh, uh, stag ratio and uh, uh, then um, i look for uh, uh, total protein and uh, um, albumin levels and uh, aesthetic fluid analysis for uh, cytology and uh, ada levels first time uh, if uh, uh, doing uh, aesthetic fluid analysis for this patient sir okay go through the results Sir, uh, hemoglobin is 10.2, total count 12,300, sir, and platelet count is 76,000. Passing blood sugar normal, uh, creatinine 2.1, uh, blood urea nitrogen 77.5, total bilirubin uh, 4.2. Why don't you interpret each of this? May yes, sir. There is a thrombocytopenia with uh, uh, leukocyte counts are elevated, sir, with anemia. Uh, I want to know the MC. Uh, either hypo microcytic or hypochromic. So even in alcoholic, there will be NCV will be elevated. Uh, next one will be the blood urea nitrogen creatinine elevated. So there is a chance of uh, either acute kidney injury because I don't know the value of uh, basic basic value from last three months. Uh, so either it's a uh, acute kidney injury difficult to interpret. Sir. And LFT there is a total blood urea in four point two and uh, AST LT is a 64-55 sir. So in alcoholic liver disease, as expected, AST more than ALT, and alkaline fast is uh, 186. It's normal. It's normal. Yes sir. AG reversal was uh, uh, 2.2 and 3.2. AG reversal was there. INR is 2.1. Urine protein showed uh, albumin plus and fasciles 4 to 5 hypophil, and uh, aesthetic fluid total count is uh, 1250. In uh, polymna uh, nucleosity is seven percent. That means it's a uh, SBP sir, more than two fifty absolute neutrophilic count, and SAG is one point no, one point two. So it will uh, tell us uh, uh, portal hypertension, uh, aesthetic fluid culture negative, and the alpha fetoprotein levels are mainly elevated sir, six point nanogram per ml. The upper lower limbs negative for venous thrombosis. What next? Uh, sir, next I want to uh, look for ultrasound abdomen. Ultrasound abdomen. Sunken both look no focal lesion. Portal vein is 14 millimeter. So portal vein is dilated. Poor flow detected. Spleen enlarged. Spleen vein is 11 millimeter. Splenic hilar collateral marked ascites. OZD small esophageal varices with no RCS. Cardiofundal varices F2 mild pH. Okay, so what does it show? So there is a uh, features of portal hypertension with a uh, grass acid, sir. Uh, with uh, features of portal hypertension, there is no evidence of any portal vein thrombosis uh, or any focal lesions in the uh, uh, liver. Yeah, this is why did you say there is no evidence of portal vein thrombosis? He has written poor flow detected. Did you see the picture before? There is an arrow there. Yes, sir. Arrow there. There is a hypoid. Yeah, you are not seeing any flow there. Okay, sir. You are not seeing any problem. What could be the reasons? Sir, in portal hypertension, the flow will be sluggish or uh, reversal. Good. Yes, one. But uh, portal vein thrombosis, there will be absence of flow. You are not seeing any color in the portal vein, right? Yes, sir. So it will be. Is partial thrombosis? Is there partial thrombosis? And partial thrombosis occur? Possible, sir. Yes, sir. The classification wise itself, they say it very clearly. You know, there can be flow through portal vein even in presence of uh, partial thrombosis. Okay. That okay, need not be complete. Okay, this particular doctor didn't show it. What will you do next? So, uh, so uh, now what? Uh, now with the portal vein thrombosis seen, uh, what all additional things you should keep in your mind? Sir, in cirrhotic patient, either it is uh, tumor thrombus or non-tumor thrombus, we need to rule out. Sir. So next one, I want to do CT liver angiogram sir, because mainly elevated alpha fetoprotein. Mm. It's grass ascites, so it's uh, to detect the focal lesions in the liver will be uh, 
defect. So I want okay. to do the CT. Uh, do, do, we'll do a CT to detect focal uh, liver lesion like hepatocellular carcinoma. Maybe Can you differentiate a bland thrombus and a tumor thrombus? In, in That's a standard test. question. How will you differentiate a bland thrombus from a tumor thrombus of the portal vein? Uh, portal vein in triple phase and there will be the arterial enhancement in uh, thrombus sir. It's uh, washed out in the portal and delayed phases sir. And okay. usually uh, portal vein thrombus will continue to the uh, tumor and it can't be separated from the tumor. And uh, yes, sir. we get an expensive thrombus. Sir, sir? We get an expensive thrombus. If we get an expensive thrombus, the size of the portal vein is yes, more than 18 or 20. Then you think of a uh, or rather bulging portal vein. And then the portal vein bulges with the thrombus. Okay, that yes, is a, that's that indicates it could be a growing or it could be a tumor thrombus. The normal Blind portal vein thrombosis, this, uh, the, the basic size of the portal vein will not increase so much. So that is what uh, Dr. Charles is trying to say. Okay. The creator here is 2.1. You want to get the CT? Yeah, that's right. Uh, no, in this patient, uh, uh, we admin, uh, no, no, not possible, sorry. CT liver. How do you pick up the tumor then? Then ultrasound Doppler. Uh, Contrast man, ultrasound with uh, contrast uh, ultrasound. Okay, okay. one is uh, Doppler, ultrasound with the Doppler contrast. Any other method? What is contrast enhanced ultrasound? Contrast enhanced ultrasound. Sorry, sir, completely. Okay. Just read about what is CES, <laughs> contrast enhanced ultrasound. You, you, you can use. Sonoview or sonosoid contrast and behave similar to the uh, appear sim you get appearances similar to CT or MR on the ultrasound. So you get arterial hyper enhancement, you get washouts. Yes, sir. With contrast and then ultrasound. Just read about it. So in patients with uh, renal failure and mouth masses, contrast and then ultrasound might be a better option than a CT. So patient actually had a CT scan done uh, from the uh, peripheral hospital and and then they found a portal vein thrombus and then patient was referred over to us. Okay, so we don't we have not done it ourselves. So this was the finding. Uh, CT abdomen showed cirrhotic liver, no focal lesion, gallbladder normally distended, hepatic veins normal, portal vein showed a thrombus extending to the plasma superior mesenchymal thick vein, no contrast enhancement, multiple collators around the portal vein, clinic vein patent. Multiple collators near the splenic phylum, moderate splenomegaly, significant SIT is noted. Pancreas normal, stomach and small large bowels appears normal. Okay, so same finding. There is no HCC and uh, there's no contrast enhancement. So it looks like, so this is a blind and therefore we will not think of HCC at all. Yes, sir. There is no HCC seen as per the CT. Okay. But I also yes, doubt whether it was done under the HCC protocol. That's another problem. Most of the yes, peripheral sir. hospitals, because they have got the CT scan and all, will, yes, uh, they will ask for the CT scan and they won't ask for the HCC protocol. So the protocol will not be followed and one may even miss it. Okay. Or yes, atypical findings may be there. So if it is not done under a protocol, you may have to repeat it. But we have to wait for the creatine to normal, become normal. Otherwise, we won't be able to do. Okay, how will you proceed further? Sir, uh, then I want to. Uh, 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 then I want to start this patient to uh, stabilize the patient with. Uh, I'll start IV antibiotics and uh, I'll send the culture aesthetic fluid culture. Um, uh, in this patient, it came no growth, sir. Um, uh, broad spectrum IV antibiotics, uh, probably cephalopurazone cell back them to cover uh, white spectrum or uh, cephalotaxin. I'll start the and uh, next one I'll uh, uh, start him, uh, um, uh, start him on sodium restricted diet uh, um, up to uh, 80 milligrams per day, um, 80 to 90 milligrams. 
and uh, uh, nutrition and almond infusion sir uh, 8 mg per deciliter so and i will monitor the urine output uh, stick to urine output how much of albumin did you say we are not getting sir albumin uh, per day 100 mg 100 grams per day sir okay. Did you get that figure? Hundred grams per day. How do you give argument? How do you give argument? Ma'am, ma'am, all men use uh, by infusion. Ma'am, uh, usually. What are you trying to treat here? To uh, replace. Uh, what is your diagnosis? Is it HRS? No, not HRS. Okay. Sir, it's a HRSAK. HRSAK. So, what is the HRSAK? How do you treat HRSAK? HRSAK, I'll treat with a... Uh, uh, there is a part of sepsis also for the patient. There is a SDP. And uh, treat with... How do you treat HRSAK? Question is simple. Yes, sir. HRSAK, uh, first will be the volume replacement with uh, albumin. Uh, first... Uh, then i'll uh, uh, with uh, then uh, deadly pressin i'll give sir 3 mg uh, 3 mg uh, over uh, 24 hours so chara se treated with vasopressors and albumin and what is the dose of albumin albumin usually 1 g per uh, kg up to 100 g per day we can uh, maximum we can replace sir. on the day on day one One gram per kg up to 100 milligram, and then 20 to 40 grams per day. Yes, sir. And what uh, vasoconstrictors do you use? Uh, teleprisin, sir. Vasoconstrictor. Teleprisin, three milligram per uh, 24 hours, uh, like infusion uh, doses. So I'll mix it three uh, ml of three uh, ml of uh, teleprisin in fifty uh, ml of normal saline over 24 hours. Uh, will infusion will be. Okay, what are the other options? Suppose uh, telepresin is not available or patient is not tolerating telepresin. Uh, telepresin is not available, then norepinephrine I'll start with. Any other option? Do you use operated? After that, yes. Sir. Okay. So you have you have got a patient with cirrhosis. It's got decompensation, SBP, AKA. It's starting right. on antibiotic, vasopressin, and right. okay. albumin. Al. Me and nutrition uh, with a decompensated cirrhosis, I uh, would like to give uh, thirty-five to forty kilo calorie per kg per day, sir. With the one point uh, because of renal failure, I'll restrict the protein intake to one gram per kg per day, and uh, uh, with uh, nutrition and anti-hepatic encephalopathy measures. Uh, uh, then there's uh, no encephalopathy. Man, clinically there is no encephalopathy. Uh, Encephalopathy, man, uh, but uh, because of these patients is more prone to uh, there is a SBP and uh, uh, and uh, recent SIT, so uh, there will be all translocation. So like to give uh, encephalopathy. Okay, Doctor Charles, any uh, do, you, do you use uh, anti trichoma regime as uh, primary prophylaxis in a patient who doesn't have it? Hepatic and fluid. Primary prophylaxis. Non-leader. Is it required? Yes or no? Sir, yes, sir. No, yes, that's sir. what I feel. Okay. Don't think there's any evidence as of now. You can in patients with hepatic and fluid, you can treat, and you can treat use it to prevent recurrence. Okay. Otherwise, uh, I don't think there's evidence for a primary prophylaxis. 
ഓക്കെ റീഡ് അപ്പ് എൽ വി എൽ എൽ വി പി റോൾ ഓഫ് ആൽബമിൻ ആൻഡ് ഇൻഡിക്കേഷൻ ഇൻ വേരിയസ് കണ്ടീഷൻ ടിപ്സ് ഇൻ സച്ച് സിറ്റുവേഷൻ വാട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ട്രാൻസ്പ്ലാന്റേഷൻ ഇനിയും ഓർ വിൽ യു മാനേജ് യു കൺസർവേറ്റീവ്ലി because the melt core not involves the uh, sat is as a core for uh, uh, this thing and uh, but creatine will be so is melt core will be more than uh, uh, 20 sir so going to going into deep trouble there sir i think your answer is not so transplant or not yes sir he request transplant is a candidate for tips for okay let's see how do you manage refractory ascites what are the treatment options uh sodium restricted diet sir uh, refractory ascites uh, large volume paracetamol uh, tips tips, tips, tips and uh, tips and then uh, final option will be the transplantation sir okay what is alpha pump alpha pump is a uh, ascetic low flow pump Where do you use alpha pump? Sir, alpha pump in uh, refractory ascites, but uh, there is, with the alpha pump, there is a chance of uh, getting a recurrent uh, acute kidney injury and uh, local site uh, infection. So, only European countries are most, mostly using this alpha pump. Yeah, patients who are on palliative care, patients who are refractory ascites, who are not candidate for tips or liver transplant. In such patients, alpha pump is an option. So okay. you don't have to bring them in for repeat attacks and albums. Okay, sir. Okay. And is it candidate for tips? Sir, uh, depends upon if the uh, MELD score will be more than 18 and uh, BILRUBIN will be more than uh, 3. So usually if MELD score more than 3, uh, sorry, MELD score more than uh, uh, 18 and uh, CTP score more than 12, BILRUBIN more than 3 will be uh, not, not a candidate for the uh, tips, sir. Okay. and what about transplantation yes sir we need to uh, we need to list for the transplantation sir because we have to be 4.6 inr is 2.1 vat is 2.1 what would be is mel score or of approximate mel score will be is it more than 25 more than Okay, suppose his MELT score is more than, uh, it's 14. He has got a correct ascites. He's not a candidate for tips. Would you consider transplant? Yes, sir. So, what, that brings to the question, what are the MELT exceptions? There are a few MELT exceptions, and you should know what are the MELT exceptions. Sir, MELT exceptions will be uh, hepatopulmonary syndrome, sir, hepatic hydrothorax, uh, uh, and uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. Okay, CC, uh, some centers give MELD exceptions. So, uh, the other complications of cirrhosis that are not reflected in the MELD, if they are causing significant um, reduction in the quality of life, so you, you can give MELD exception points. The patient with refractory aside is recurring recur- recurrent tabs, even if the MELD is, not, is below 15, then you can consider liver transplant. Okay, thank you. okay i think uh, uh, that nothing more to add uh, is there a role for midodrin waptin in this case dr charles uh, can answer uh, jagdish do you think there is a role for midodrin or waptin sir uh, midodrin there is a uh, role sir uh, it's a alpha 1 adrenergic agonist uh, in refractory sit uh, but waptin uh, there is no role sir and there what's will the, be what's the role of midodrin here midodrin for just vaso constriction sir so and so, increase the increase the uh, natri uresis and uh, uh, so octreotide plus midodrin and albumin in type 1 hrs because the uh, celebrosin is not available in the us so they use more of octreotide midodrin and albumin yes sir okay that's one indication okay sir. otherwise uh, th- there are no strong recommendations to use midodrin in refractory ascites even though we use a lot there's no 
strong evidence to use it. Please read up the mass trial, the trial of metodrine plus albumin in refractive uh, cirrhosis and ascites. Charles, is a question: Is SBP a, a milk exception? SBP is not a milk exception, madam. And treatment of portulan thrombosis in this case actually is chronic, no? So is there any role for anticoagulant? Okay. Jayesh, Jayesh, you want to take that? Or? Uh, sir, uh, ma'am, there is no, uh, there is a portal cavernoma, ma'am, and uh, uh, chronic portal vein thrombosis in cirrhosis patient, there is no role of anticoagulation. Where did you say portal cavernoma? Nothing. Sorry. Sir. Sorry, sorry, collateral, sir, not portal cavernoma. Sorry. Collateral, sorry. You need land thrombosis, right? Yes, sir. Is there any indication for anticoagulation here? Uh, no, sir. No, in this patient, uh, no indication, sir. Suppose the patient is a candidate for liver transplant. Yes, okay, that, that you don't want the thrombus to progress into SME or into the deep into the SME because in such situation, patients who have got thrombus who are candidates for liver transplant or on waiting this, we tend to anticoagulate them because we don't want the thrombus to be progressing. I think this patient already had a thrombus extending into the SME. Yeah. As we, don't want, we, don't, we don't want it further progression. So, the candidate for liver transplant definitely yes, we, we will anticoagulate them. And the extension to SMB, I think we must consider a serious issue because further extension will create a lot of problems. So, I think that is an indication for treatment. Extension to SMB, even the proximal SMB is an indication for treatment. But will these chronic thrombus uh, resolve with anticoagulants? But I think, uh, uh, except uh, okay, you prevent extension, I cannot, yeah. If I'm right, I'm not certain about it. Yeah, this chronic thrombus won't resolve, ma'am. It won't resolve. We're not giving for it for it to resolve. Uh, only to it, prevent further extension, okay. If it extends into extensively into the SMV, then you may not get the inflow at the time of transplant, it may be difficult to get the inflow. So, such situation, we may have to do transposition and. So that's the only indication for anti-violation. Thank you, Dr. Charles, for giving us a lot of information. And I think both the candidates did quite well today. What, what's your assessment, Dr. Charles? Yeah, both of them did very well, ma'am. Yeah. Nice to see. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, I think these are the areas, uh, some areas which requires a little more reading. Infection in uh, cirrhosis, especially various types and different types of infection, antibiotic use, uh, empirical management and subsequent management according to culture report. Then uh, this portal vein thrombosis, these are usually not discussed. So just read up. Uh, you have a lot of uh, papers on these things. Okay, I think we, we should uh, stop today. Any further, any question from anyone's side? No, I think. Can we close the session? So the chat box questions have been answered, I think. So. Uh, I have not looked at the chat box. Is there any questions there, ma'am? Nothing specific. Most of them I get the answered. So. Okay. So we will. Uh, I will thank you both the uh, residents. Uh, uh, for, one question from uh, Charles: Is there, uh, is there, if there's multiple organ failure, is there a, a, a indication for liver transplant? Yeah, I just answered that in the chat box. You answered. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll just explain. Uh, yeah, the lung involvement is the most uh, most dreaded one. That in, has got very high mortality post transplant. And when there is multiple organ involvement, whether to transplant or not depends on uh, the extent of involvement. If the multiple anotropic support, suppose the patient is on three anotropic supports, if he's on high FIO two, then such patients we may not. But if we have got some area to manure, it's, it's only on one support. If it is not high, like it's on ventilation for uh, protecting the airway because of encephalopathy, it's only on one support. Such patients, we will consider for a transplant. But patients with multiple, multi, on multiple supports, high FIO to FIO to uh, of more than 60, then such patients, uh, we, we don't consider for a transplant. More than two organs, they say, no? more than two, up to two, I think, and the type of organ. Okay, we will wind up today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Charles. Thank you, Jandi, ma'am. Thank you, the residents, uh, for joining us for discussion. The next session is on 13th, Professor Vinayagumar, 
will be discussing again on cirrhosis, uh, some other aspect, maybe GA bleed and other things. Okay, with Dr. Ramesh. Until then, goodbye. Good night to all of you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Charles.